Hi, welcome to a new section, High Performance Computing. In this section, we will see three broad but not mutually exclusive categories of methods. Just-in-time compilation of Python code, resorting to a lower level language such as C from Python, dispatching tasks across multiple computing units using parallel computing. Let's start with the first video, using Python to write faster code. The first way to make Python code run faster is to know all features of the language. Python brings many syntax features and modules in the standard library that run much faster than any other you could write by hand. Moreover, although Python may be slow, if you write in Python like you would write in C or Java, it is often fast enough when you write Pythonic code. In this section, we show how badly written Python code can be significantly improved when using all the features of the language. To begin with, let's define a list of normally distributed random variables using the random built-in module instead of NumPy. Next, write a function that computes the sum of all numbers in that list. Someone inexperienced with Python may write in Python as if it was C, which would make the function look like this one. Here we have defined a function sum1 with a variable res and used a for loop. At the end, we return res. And now call the sum1 function. So this is the value returned by our sum1 function. We are now ready to check the time taken for the execution of the sum1 function. Let's use the time it magic command. It took around 7 milliseconds to compute the sum of only 100,000 numbers, which is slow. And this may lead some to say, rather unfairly, that Python is slow. Now let's write a slightly improved version of this code, taking into account the fact that we can enumerate the elements of a list using for x in i instead of iterating with an index. Go ahead and run this code. We now call the sum2 function. And again, we check the execution time for the sum2 function. This slight modification gave us a two-fold speed improvement. Finally, we realize that Python brings a built-in function to compute the sum of all elements in a list. So, we define another function, sum3, and then call this function. Even this time, we check the time taken. This version is 17 times faster than the first version, and we only wrote pure Python code. Let's move to another example involving strings. We'll create a list of strings representing all numbers in our previous list. Go to the next line and type strings equals modules.3f, which means we want just three values after the decimal. Modulus x for x in L. And let's get the first three strings. Here we have the output. We define a function concatenating all strings in that list. Again, an inexperienced Python programmer could write code such as this one. Let's call the concat1 function and check the time taken by it for execution. This function is very slow because a large number of tiny strings are allocated. Next, we realize that Python offers the option to easily concatenate several strings. Let's create another function, concat2, and call this function. You'll notice that this was quite fast. Why don't we check the exact time taken for the execution? Time it concat2. This function is 1640 times faster. Finally, we define the variable L to count the number of occurrences of all numbers between 0 and 99 in a list, containing 100,000 integers between 0 and 99. The naive way would be to iterate over all elements in the list and construct the histogram using a dictionary. In the next line, 
we add a block of code to do this. If you call this hist1 function, you'll get a list of all the values. Apply the timeit magic command on the hist1 function to get the execution time. You can see that it took around 11.9 milliseconds. Next, we realize that Python offers a default dict structure that handles the automatic creation of dictionary keys. To work on this, we need to first import default dict from collections. Next, we define a function hist2. Call the hist2 function and calculate the time taken by this better version of the Python code. And we could clearly state that this version is slightly faster. Finally, we realize that the built in collections module offers a counter class that does exactly what we need. Let's import this module from collections package. Then define another function, hist3. Now we will try to make this function a bit better than the previous two. So we return counter and passing it to the value L. Now call the function hist3. Even this time, we check the time taken by the function for execution. Done. So you could see that this version is twice as fast as the first one. So when your code is too slow, the first step is to make sure you're not reinventing the wheel and that you're making good use of all the features of the language.